Hello, discrete math fans! We're going to be using a programming language in this class called LaTeX. LaTeX is a special purpose language used to typeset mathematics. LaTeX takes plain text and converts it into a beautifully typeset PDF file. Let's take a look at the website overleaf.com. This is a full featured, free, cloud based LaTeX editor and compiler. You may want to try to replicate what is going on in this video. First, we need to create an account on Overleaf. I've already done this, so why don't you pause the video while you create your account. Now that you've got your Overleaf account, let's go ahead and log in. Now that we're logged in, we can see the projects that we're working on. I have none yet, you probably don't have any either, so let's create one. Go to New Project, and then Blank Project. Let's give it a name, I'll just call it Discrete Math Testing, and let's create the project. The first thing that happens is that Overleaf creates a blank document. You see three windows here. On the far left, you'll see the various files associated with this project. Overleaf has made a file called main.tex. In LaTeX, most files have a .tex extension. In the middle, you can see into this main.tex file, and then on the far right, you can see the output, which is a PDF file. Let's make a change to the source file and compile it. Notice that we can immediately see the change to the output file. To see all of the various features of what LaTeX can do, I've provided you with a sample.tex file. It's called discrete math hw template.tex and it's posted to Blackboard. Take a moment to go find that file because we're going to upload it to Overleaf. Just download the file from Blackboard to your computer. Pause the video now while you go find that file. All right, you've got the file. Let's upload it. Click on the Upload button that you see just above main.tex. I'll just drag the file into the Upload dialog box. Now we have the discrete math hw template.tex file inside Overleaf. Click on that file on the far left. Now you see the source code in the middle. Scroll down a bit. You'll see it's quite long. Let's compile it now. Above the PDF output is a button that says Recompile. Click that button. Look at that. The output is there now. Let's give ourselves some more room. Let's get rid of the File Tree tool. Click on this left arrow to get rid of it. Let's also drag the barrier to show the PDF to be larger. In this LaTeX file, there are some preamble lines before we hit the main body of the document, which starts on line 13 with Begin Document. The preamble lines load in various packages and set various settings. Let's look at the main body of the document. Starting on line 15, you can see text that will get typeset in the PDF file. On line 17, you see the use of a problem number macro, which we created on lines 10 and 11. Going down to line 24, we see the first use of math mode. When we have a mathematical expression, it gets enclosed in dollar signs, which signifies math mode. All math expressions in dollar signs are set in line, meaning they flow with the text. Lines 29 through 33 show display math mode, where the expression is centered and not displayed with the rest of the text. This should be used for expressions that are important 
and need to be displayed on their own line. Lines 37 through 47 show the very important align structure which allows you to write an equation with lined up equal signs or any other symbol that you want to line up. There are lots of LaTeX features in this document that you should check out. Let's make a small change and recompile. On line 15, I'll change a word and recompile. Let me point out at the top of the document, we have included various packages such as AMS Math and AMS Sim. These provide some symbols that we'll use frequently. Let's say you are satisfied with your work and you're ready to turn in this assignment. You'll need to download two files from Overleaf, the .tex source code and the PDF output. If you click on the Overleaf symbol in the upper left corner, you'll be given some options to download your source and output. One more option in the upper corner is this up arrow, which returns you to the main screen in Overleaf. A great tool in Overleaf is the ability to code share so that multiple people can look at and edit a file. We may not use this feature much in this class. Just keep in mind that Overleaf has a ton of great features just waiting for you to unlock. We will be creating a lot of files for this class. Many homework assignments will have a LaTeX component. In this project, you can have many individual files. So you could have one for each homework assignment. I encourage you to play around with LaTeX. It is a terrific programming language. All of the material I will be using in this class are typeset in LaTeX. It takes some time to get good at coding in LaTeX. As with any programming language, there are a zillion different commands and you should not expect to learn them all and create things from scratch. Instead, you should try to look at other people's code and see how it works and borrow code fragments. The Overleaf website has a fairly extensive LaTeX reference that is worth looking at. While I am recommending that you use Overleaf for your work in this class, there are free LaTeX compilers that you can install on your computer. I will post information about those in case you want to give this a try. For everything we're doing in this class, Overleaf will definitely do the job great. Okay, that's all for now.